Stephanie with Project Vibrancy Meals. How have you been? Happy Mother's Day. I'm sort of belatedly saying Happy Mother's Day. I'll explain a little bit more below, but anyway, I hope everyone had a great weekend and is having a good week. I thought that I would talk today about early farmer's market finds and early, I, I realize that I'm being very local in saying this, it's early in Minnesota to uh, be hitting up the farmer's market. The weather is finally nice and things are starting to show up there. The markets are open. And so, but there's not a lot there. Uh, there's lots of pretty flowers and there's, you know, certainly the meat purveyors and all of those things that are usually there, eggs and all that good stuff. Uh, but in terms of produce, which is what I really meant, there isn't a lot yet and that's okay. It's still so fun to go and nothing is more fun to me than walking through the farmer's market and being inspired to make something fresh and fantastic for dinner. So definitely be going to the farmer's market at this time of year and I thought I would give you some tips for, okay, there's not a lot there, but what can you do? Especially when uh, you wanna be thinking ahead for the week. So I'm always encouraging you and everyone to think about cooking, batch cooking, cooking extra food when you're bothering to cook so that you can always get more than one meal out of your efforts, whether it's lunch that you take the next day or you set yourself up for a few dinners. That's what my meal plans, Project Vibrancy Meals are based on, a batch cooking session, and then uh, really fast dinners the rest of the week. And so I, I always encourage that. I talk about it in my blog too. And, uh, and so today I wanted to sort of give you a tip. I'm gonna take you basically, let's pretend that we're going to the farmer's market and we're just gonna walk through together and I'll give you a little peek into how I would think about shopping at the market this time of year when there's not a lot of produce there and how I would turn that into several meals during the week. So let's, let's pretend like we just got there. I sort of have Minneapolis farmer's market in mind. I also have St. Paul farmer's market in mind. Uh, especially at this time of year when uh, they're just bigger markets and so they might have a little bit more available but I love all the neighborhood markets too love them all I'll go to any farmers market so much fun and so uh, I'm envisioning the first thing that I look for at this time of year is great lettuce particularly lettuces that have the root ball still attached because they will last so much longer in your fridge than if you buy just a head of lettuce that uh, does not have the roots attached anymore. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that you're gonna wanna eat that lettuce that night because they tend to be pretty fragile. Uh, but if you can find one for sure at the St. Paul Farmer's Market uh, that has the root ball attached, that is the way to go. And lettuce loves cool weather. So that's why lettuces you know, show up right away and they're so delicious. So I would definitely buy, especially with the root ball, you know, several heads of that and then uh, store it well when I got home, which means, you know, washing it, drying it carefully and, uh, and storing it in a container that has a little bit of air circulation in it. So if you put it in a plastic bag, poking holes in the bag, uh, just making sure that you, you have dry leaves going in and a little bit of exposure to air and you will be in great shape. It will last several days longer. So anyway, I would definitely go for the lettuces and I would know that I was gonna be having salads later in the week or at least a couple of days later. And then the next thing I would look for is all of the incredible herbs because the herbs are there now and buying herbs at the farmer's market is an absolute steal compared to buying them at the grocery store. And you can usually buy giant bunches of them and Sometimes you think, what am I gonna do with all of this? And uh, my solution is to bring the herbs home, of course, and then to turn them into a puree with oil. I just almost do that as soon as I get home. And I like to mix the herbs together. So I love basil and mint together. That just tastes like vacation to me. It also tastes amazing with Italian food or Vietnamese and Thai food. It can really play a lot of different ways. And then with those herbs, I will add some sort of an aromatic. So at this time of year, I would be looking at spring onions and maybe use some of the spring onion greens, or I'd be looking for garlic scapes and toss some of those in, or you could always just use some garlic uh, or a, a little bit of a milder onion, like a shallot or something like that. Um, but I puree those together with some salt, with enough oil to sort of cover. And then I've got this base that's sort of a pesto 
but it doesn't have nuts or cheese in it. Not that you can't put those things in it, but if you're following Whole30 or Auto Protocol uh, and you are avoiding those foods, it's fine. There's so much flavor without them. Truly not a big deal. So it's basically kind of a, a pistou, and that's sort of the French version of pesto. And it can go a lot of ways from there. So I bank that in my refrigerator. And then if I'm gonna use it with a salad, then I'll add acid like lemon juice or balsamic vinegar or sherry vinegar or whatever that you're in the mood for. And uh, maybe a little hint of something sweet, like a little bit of maple syrup and some salt. And that can be an amazing vinaigrette. You don't wanna add the acid to it before you put it in the fridge because the herbs will turn really brown so that's why you just kind of want to add it before you eat it um, so that can be one way and then another can be to not add acid add a little bit of honey or maple syrup and smear it on top of a piece of salmon and run it under the broiler that's a, it's an amazing salmon glaze and uh, since it's cooked so briefly the herbs actually stay quite fresh so that's another idea that can be very quick that is also a great dipping sauce for kids because the little hint of sweetness and certainly adding the salt too uh, makes it more kid friendly. So sometimes kids like to dip, you know, chicken or uh, their veggies or whatever in a little dipping sauce, and that can be a really great one. Just fresh herbs uh, with oil and a little hint of something sweet. So uh, obviously, I'm also looking for then the spring onions, the garlic scapes. Uh, ramps which are wild leeks often show up at the market this time of year and all of those things are amazing pureed together with the herbs or for those they're just great in everything gently saute uh, they don't take a lot of cooking uh, because their flavor is a little bit more fragile and then if you can eat eggs they're incredible in scrambled eggs um, awesome with fried eggs basically in any possible way great in a frittata so uh, those early spring aromatics and eggs are incredible together and uh, and so I usually buy you know some a, a couple of bunches of those and then I go that puree really knocks things down into a small amount and then I have that ready to go for the week and then of course if you spot wild mushrooms uh, morels at this time of year they're uh, they're expensive, so it's a bit of an indulgence, but they are sublime. And so if you can eat dairy, cooking them in a little bit of butter with a finish of salt and a squeeze of lemon, I don't know, I, I almost don't even say eat them with anything else. Um, again, with an egg, they're incredible, but I just like to eat them, that's it. That's just like heaven on earth to me. Uh, if you can't eat dairy, they are equally delicious, sauteed in a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, or you could even do you know, a little bit of bacon fat, um, just being careful. I'd almost use like a little bacon fat and some other kind of oil so that you don't overpower the beautiful and you know, kind of subtle earthiness of the morels. So those would be my top finds. And then uh, I'm gonna post a recipe below for a brand new blog post I just put up literally 15 minutes ago and it's for a chicken soup with kale and sweet potatoes and sausage. So I would go to the meat purveyors and I would pick up a whole chicken. This soup, I have you cook a whole chicken because I'm wanting you to end up with extra food. I mean, certainly you'll have um, a nice batch of soup, but then you will, uh, because I have you poach, in effect, poach the entire chicken very gently uh, as the first step of the soup. You end up with enough chicken for a great salad later in the week to use those greens, to use that herb puree, and then you've gotten uh, want two, that's two meals, and three if you've gone on to eat eggs, or perhaps four if you've gone on to add the salmon as well. So that's just how I would think about going to the market. I thought that I would share that with you guys. I'm gonna put the link below to the uh, Fresh Tart recipe. And uh, yeah, happy cooking this weekend. I'm actually about to leave town. I'm gonna to drive out to Spicer, Minnesota, which is, there's a beautiful lake there called Green Lake, and my aunt and uncle own a home there. And my dad and stepmom are actually going to be there too from Wyoming. And so uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm stephanie.a.meyer. I'm sure we will be doing plenty of cooking at least tomorrow. I'm not gonna get there until basically dinner time tonight, and I think we're going out tonight. Um, 
but yeah, doing some cooking tomorrow and if we come up with any cool, anything cool, I'll be sharing it on uh, Instagram as I always do. And I often push my Instagram posts over to this page too. So for those of you who are not on Instagram, then you can see them here. Uh, but the videos are in the Instagram stories and I, I tend to use that quite a lot. So share cooking tips, share articles I think are interesting, share a little health raves. And so I'd love to have you follow me over there as well. All right, you guys, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, happy cooking, happy farmer's marketing. And uh, please leave a comment below, leave a question below. I'd love to know what your favorite farmer's market finds are this early in the season and how you like to put them to good use. So, okay, take care, bye.